all of nature, apart from maybe daisies and waterfalls, is a brutal struggle for power. These horse monster things are using their wooden head sticks in a primal battle to decide which of them should be in charge. The winner will become king of the herd. The other will probably have to leave and find work as a different sort of animal. Unlike animals, we don't have to fight to decide who's in charge. Instead, we do a vote. A vote that would be pointless without something called democracy. Democracy was invented in ancient Greece by the ancient Greeks, probably after a vote. It's hard to imagine that this was the beginning of democracy. So to help you imagine, we've got two actors in expensive costumes and some other people in trainers and sheets slightly out of focus. Just like other Greek inventions like thick yogurt, sodomy and triangles, democracy has taken the world by storm. Someone who didn't agree with democracy was Adolf Hitler. Hitler didn't have much to do with democracy at all, but people do like watching documentaries about Hitler, so we've put him in, which is democratic, which he'd hate. British democracy began in Knights in Armour times here at Runnymede, which sounds worse than it is. Britain used to be ruled by a king or queen, just like now, except back then they were treated like a god, rather than a slightly better version of someone off made in Chelsea. Royal behaviour was total shithouse, until eventually the people rose up and made King John sign the Magna Carta. According to Google Translate, Magna Carta is Latin for cardboard volcano. It was a sort of contract that granted everyone in Britain a democratic voice. Soon, Britain had its own parliament, which could stop the king doing what he wanted by a simple process of cutting his head off. Parliament remains here to this day, in one of the world's most iconic buildings, Big Ben House. To find out more about democracy, I've got an expert here with me. Hello, who are you? I'm Robert Hazel, and I'm Professor of Government and the Constitution at University College London. What makes democracy a better way to pick a Prime Minister than just letting them take turns? I'm not sure how this alternative system would work, where you say, we let them take turns. Well, if, like, one does, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then another Thursday, Friday, Saturday... And suppose we were running a company. Would you allow any stranger to be in charge of it for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then a different person to be in charge Thursday, Friday, Saturday? That's not a sensible way to go about anything. What would happen if we voted to end democracy? How would we do that? Take a vote. And what would the vote say? I vote to end democracy. And what would we put in its place? Don't know. Well, it wouldn't be a very sensible thing to end one system of government without knowing what system of government you're going to replace it with. It's like saying, let's vote to leave our house without knowing where we're going to go and live next. No one's going to do that. I bet you're terrible to go on holiday with. Election day is your chance to do democracy. You don't have to stand up and be counted. You can sit down and be ignored if you like, because that's your democratic right. You can choose not to matter, and that matters if you want it to. It's up to you. Next time on Moments of Wonder, I'll be finding out how to get the noise out of plates.